with Armand still in jail and then Marco kidnapping Luca, Tony finds herself increasingly in a desperate situation where her time is limited, yet in that limited amount of time, she has so much to do if she wants to keep all the things that allowed her to have her life in America somewhat stable. So first topic is gonna be the peace before everything kind of went to hell. And that's when we start talking about Armand and Hayek who aren't necessarily living like kings in prison, but they have comforts that the average person wouldn't have. Armand and Hayek have it where some of the guards are paid off so they can have access to a cell phone. And Nadia comes to visit, not a conjugal visit, but at the very least she can see her husband and she lets him know that Tony hasn't been doing her job, which is a bit of a problem for her mom because Hayek is about to pay off a judge about a couple of million dollars in order for Armand to get out and run the business. So with that in mind, Armand finds himself having to contact Tony to see what the hell is going on, which leads us to our second topic in which Tony clearly has only the time and effort to focus on getting Luca back. And with Armand in prison, he's not able to do much. Yes, he can be a, an ear for her to a bit to, but since he doesn't have the same powers he used to have in order to get things done, that leads to Tony being desperate enough to talk to Garrett because he's part of the FBI. Now, it isn't lost on Fiona, who's of course with Tony during all this, that Garrett's a snake, but Tony's desperate and with Garrett being part of the FBI, there's the hope that, hey, you can do something that I can't, that Amon can't in prison. And she's right. Garrett has contacts in the TSA and that is enough to help keep Marco from taking Luke out of the country. But in the process of getting Garrett involved, now Marco's even more pissed because he thinks that Tony's doing a power play Never mind trying to embarrass him by getting him arrested in front of his son. And unfortunately, being that Tony is not willing to turn over Amon or Hayek, never mind the money she's holding, this just means that Garrett kind of gets a lopsided deal out of this. He does a favor for Tony, but he can't get one in return. So he decides to shift his focus to Amon, thinking that maybe Amon's ready to talk so he can get out of jail because... While Garrett is aware that the judge that Hayek has got Amon onto is corrupt, at the same time, he doesn't know how much Amon knows or if Amon knows the short thing he could get out. So with that in mind, he tries to make a deal. Amon's not biting, but he's dumb enough to say just enough information so that one of the correctional officers that Hayek has hired to protect him and you know make sure that they can get contraband he records the conversation, and with that, Hayek knows who the rat is in his organization. All right, for the last topic, we gotta go into first what's going on with Hayek and Armand in prison. At this point, Hayek is now fully aware that Armand's the rat, and with that, we're kind of left wondering what's the next move. Clearly, Hayek is not gonna put his resources into getting Armand out of prison anymore because that's just dumb. But he is putting his resources into making sure Armand goes into generation, general population rather than the seclusion that he and Hayek has currently enjoyed. And he's even hired some people to try to kill Armand. One guy tries to shank him, not successful. Well, he does get a few hits in, but he doesn't kill him. And another one's just there to help. And luckily for Armand, he's able to take them down, but he's seriously injured at this point to the to the point it kind of makes you wonder, realistically, what can be done with Armand that's not going to lead to him dying? Because with Hayek withdrawing his help to get that corrupt judge on board, can he still get out without making a deal with Garrett? And considering that Hayek has provided all the codes that Garrett needed, and of course Garrett didn't fulfill his promise to help Armand when it came to avoiding this whole situation, a mom seems pretty much screwed at this point. But he's not the only one screwed. Because of all the stuff that Tony did with Garrett, she finds herself having to deal with Marco at his worst. He refuses to let Tony speak with Luca. He also refuses to have Tony dictate the terms of having a conversation about what's the next move. 
So instead, he has her meet her at a hotel in the middle of the night. After Tony attempted to get money to Nadia, but then Garrett messed that up because of the information he got from Hayek. And when she meets up with him, she has Fiona and Chris in the van waiting for her. Mostly because they wanted to come, especially Chris, because he does not appreciate what Marco has done at all. And also, he knows how Marco has been toward his mom, so being that he sees his family as Fiona, Jazz, Luca, and Tony, he wants to be the protector, the man of the house that Marco refuses to be. Which is why when Tony and Marco start to get really heated and Fiona's scared of the cops showing up, Fiona and Chris join the conversation, which becomes a full-blown argument. And being that Chris is starting to get buck, Marco gets a different kind of threat. With Tony, it's the threat of the mother of his child, you know, the embarrassment of having a failed marriage, especially since in the Philippines, divorce is not an option, so... Her leaving him is a huge embarrassment, and now he has this kid, this who's barely like 17, 18. No, I think he's 16. Either way, this kid is now thinking he's a man that can confront him, and he already has his wife emasculating him, so those two get into a shoving match. Chris pushes Marco over the stairs, and with that, Marco breaks his neck, and he's dead. This is all caught on camera. And a man named John Price gets involved, the man who owns the motel, since on top of it being caught on video and he has access to the video, Tony decides to go to his office, tell him what happened, tells him to call the cops, and reveals that she's undocumented. So with that, he knows about a murder caused by her nephew and that she's undocumented, which of course makes it so that he can assume that the others are undocumented and based on episode previews he's going to blackmail her so the first highlight is just questioning what's next for tony without armand's protection right now she does still have the cryptocurrency key but with garrett cracking that code to some point and locking that money down armand being stabbed and having no real clout because hayek's not backing him what's going on with her what's next for tony is hard to say Never mind, she now has a murder on her hands because, yes, the video shows Chris killed Marco, but who cleaned up the murder? <laughs> That's going to complicate things. And just overall, the lack of ability to say what's next for Tony and whether or not she can get out of this bad situation with ease, that's going to be a real interesting and driving force over the course of the next nine episodes. With that said, the second highlight to, for me is just how much of a major gain this is for Chris. Because with Chris killing someone, now comes the question of what's next for him as well. In the first season, he had his discovery that he's undocumented. But now with him having a potential criminal record over his head, so comes the question of how this may change him. Will he decide that he's now the man of the house and he should be more involved in whatever Tony and Fiona are into? Will he kind of lash out because of this whole situation as he mentally and emotionally deals with the fact that he just killed somebody or heck considering all that nadia hayek and other people into could he potentially be recruited for their work since you know with being undocumented it might be hard for him to get a job and he wants to support his family there's a lot of ways like with tony that his story could go and the potential is i wouldn't say massive but it's far more than it was in season one. The last highlight is Nadia, and that's because with Armand potentially at a commission, this means she's no longer bridled to being his wife. In season one, we really didn't get to know her beyond being Armand's wife. I mean, you know, she also did the books, but her past, how she met Armand, stuff like that, her, her character development was very limited. So without Armand potentially hovering over her, storyline-wise, she now could possibly be more, whether it's in the effect of her relationship with Tony developing, her having to prove herself to Hayek as someone who was loyal, even though he did kill someone she was close to in the first season. 
But what I'm trying to say is that when it comes to Tony, when it comes to Chris, when it comes to Nadia, at this point, it seems like a lot of the things that were restricting them from having certain complications or development of first season have been removed. So now the potential there to see what these characters can really do when they are no longer under someone's protection or else kind of reined in because of another character, anything could happen. The first on defense topic is Tony being blackmailed and that's mainly because Black male storylines could only really end in a few ways, and that could either be this black male lasting far longer than they should on this show, or else considering that the cleaning lady hasn't been expanded to an 18 or 20 some episode season, but instead it's still 10, the likelihood of John being killed by the end of the season. Now, on the positive side, you can look at it as when it comes to John's death, that could be because Tony gets closer with Nadia and she tries to handle it. Hayek maybe gets involved because, you know, Tony still holds his holds his money. And of course, he may decide, you know, uh, he may not fully trust Nadia, but maybe Tony's more loyal. Who knows? He may decide in order to further loyalty to take out this problem for her. Never mind, we still have Chris who killed one person already. He may decide to kill another to protect his family. So there's the potential of that. Yet on the flip side, there's always a chance that John becomes a new villain and tries to accept, usurp, not sure how that should be pronounced, that he should take over from Garrett's position as the like main villain so that Garrett can be someone you kind of love to hate or someone who has a shady past but you know is trying to redeem himself. Either way, it's hard to know what they're going to do with John in the long term and considering how black male storylines usually go it's hard to get excited about it. The second on defense topic deals with Garrett in touching upon his past case before he got on the one for Hayak Aman and their criminal organization. A part of me will admit that learning about what led to his downfall with Maya could be interesting, but at the same time, I keep feeling like they're trying to do this redemption storyline when it comes to Garrett, and I just don't think that's possible. He cheated on his wife, who he has a young child with. He tried to get Fiona deported in order to get to Tony. And considering what that could have done to Jazz, what that could have done to Chris, it's really hard to see what path there is for him to redeem himself as a person. And I would even say on top of that, I still find Garrett to be the type of character who if they got written off, it wouldn't be the worst thing because there's just so much going on in Tony's life that when it comes to everybody else, it's like you have to compete with that, and Garrett's not really competing that well. The way he's written, and I mean the way he's written, not the way he's performed, he just has this generic vibe to him that is just... As much as you can see the actor's trying to do something on his own to kind of shake things up a bit, it still feels kind of stale. And with that... As much as this whole Maya situation could help give us insight, I don't feel like it's going to make the character better. It's just going to continue to feel like he's someone forced upon us to deal with, and whether we like it or not, he has to be there. 